Hello, good afternoon and welcome to another CAD lesson. Uh, today, as normal, I am joined by some very helpful people. So let's go around the room and introduce ourselves again. So hello, Dom. Hello, hello, good afternoon, how are we all? Tell us about yourself, Dom. Uh, I'm Dominic Main. Uh, I feel strange doing this every week. I'm Dominic Main, uh, lighting design and production CAD. So uh, if you'll find me on site, uh, either putting lights up or looking at plans. Fabulous. Uh, Dick's next, going around the, the Google room. Hello, my name's Dick Crabb. I used to be a sound engineer, and this is, I think, my fourth week at uh, Cadaholics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. Used to be, Dick. Used to be. Oh. <laughs> Before like that, no. I, Before all yeah, this. No, I'm going to talk a little bit about sound today as well. Cool. And Tom, hello. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Good afternoon. My name's Tom White. I do technical design drawings for events. Um, and I spend a lot of time at home, I guess, at the moment, but I'm here. Um, How are the kids? Oh, very good. Lots of Lego and lots of homeschooling, so it's going well. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, in our traditional way, shall I just ask, has anybody got any work or heard of any work developments uh, in the last week since our last session? Um, you know, most, you know, I think we're all the same. Our sort of favourite part of life, um, favourite part of our work life is out of action for now. So I've got no production management and uh, nothing really on the cards from that side of things. But um, anyone else kind of heard any developments on that in the in the live event world? No, nothing, nothing so far from my end, but I think the uh, most interesting development this week was your chat with uh, Alan Law, Mr. Health and Safety for our industry. He was good, wasn't who, he? He was very good and said some very positive things. That, um, we basically need to get off our own rear ends and get on with it and tell the government how we're going to do it and uh, make suggestions. So it was a yeah. fantastic 20 minutes and uh, really look forward to hearing more from him when you do a panel discussion. Yeah, I know. That's the next thing. Yeah. I thought I thought he was fantastic. Just just that exact message, like just that kind of get on with it. Like some of the other industries have got themselves organized and they're just getting on with it. And we need to do that, too. So hopefully that starts to uh, start to gather momentum. Um, yeah. so, uh, uh, sorry, but, Dave. Obviously, yeah. it's just anyone who hasn't watched it watches it because the the fact that he gave that the wedding industry in four weeks has made an organization got representation at government level and got into a 50 page document um shows that we have been slacking slightly yeah. absolutely i think the challenge is the challenge the gauntlet's been thrown down the challenge is out there. <laughs> we, we need to get on um fabulous uh and then dick what have you been up to over the past week like i think one of my favorite bits of this whole thing is the fact that you are kind of progressing um so incredibly well um but yeah what, where have you uh what have you been filling around with this past week so i put a little little post on facebook last night um something along the lines of uh trying to find out whether the swear jar was a tax deductible expense <laughs> um i've been wrestling with 3d cad and uh, particularly Dom's uh, model, 3D model of a theatre. Um, and actually, by yesterday evening, uh, I think I kind of got there. Yeah, just got a anything bit. to show us? Anything to screen share? Uh, so, or is it easier uh, to tell us about it? No, no, well, uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll show you because you, you, you'd asked uh, for, the, uh, for the sound side of what I've been using, which uh, we're just going to click into now um this uh this is uh dmb audio technica's uh um, acoustics modeling program so this is a basic layout of a theater that dom sent me the 3d plan of uh there's a block of stalls there a, a rear stall slightly raked yeah. a lower balcony level an upper balcony and did you have to sides. do stuff to process that into a usable format in this software? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, in this, kind of... this, no, this software supports um, input from SketchUp, SketchIt, uh, but not directly from CAD. But it's relatively easy to just create simple blocks because so this program doesn't consider walls. This is free space only. Um, if it tried to do walls, it would become a very, very expensive program. Okay. Um, but it, it it works very well, and its predictions kind of tally pretty well with uh, my gut feelings. Um, so in this, the little white and yellow blobs are loudspeakers that I put in, um, and it then allows you. So I've 
pre-prepared. So this is uh, coverage at four kilohertz. Here on the right-hand side, you can see that green is all a sort of six dB step. Yeah. Um, and then there's a darker green as so it gets a little quieter yeah. down to the blues. Uh, at the very tizzy end of uh, the spectrum, the, the very high sort of sibilant uh, hi-hats, things like that, it gets a little patchier because sound is uh, very directional at those frequencies, whereas at lower frequencies, it's almost omnidirectional. And then there's a general pink noise uh, about all of the spectrum. Um, very cool. And, and so what did this... you? Sorry. So just yeah, to yeah. jump in briefly, did you um, did you do this process in in a different way before, or is this something that you're now able to do because you can? Do you know what I mean? Is did you already use this software, or have you now been able to sort of get into this software as a result of um, working on your CAD skills? No, no. So used it used it in the past, but in a much more basic fashion. But what okay. is really nice is then when you go back to each individual loudspeaker or set of loudspeakers yeah you get all of the specific information that you need then to drop them back into dominic's cad in a 3d sense mm -hmm. so last night i sent him just a sound layer for him to xref in yeah um that was based on these xyz coordinates yeah um and the the absolute angles of of dangles and things like that um so bringing it back in is is a much easier process because you now have used a, a tool the sound side of it is very is very obvious and, and very um common for me right um so bringing it back in for for into the cad was then just a matter of of relaying these positions and making sure that they looked right yeah yeah well fantastic uh, yeah, yeah, just really, really impressed with uh, with the the leaps and bounds, I guess, that are being made here, and just the, <laughs> but the, the practical application of it. Do you see what I mean? Like, I think that's the whole point. You know, Dom and Tom and I use CAD in such different ways. Um, you know, some similarities, of course, but we we often using it to solve different types of problems. Um, yeah. So yeah, to see someone else kind of take that into their own so, world, and 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 also then starting to discover my own learnings of, for example, when I was bringing this back into CAD, each of these boxes. So this is a little line array. Yeah. Each of these boxes is its own symbol, but by I can then create a block of all six of them, bring it in each time, and then manipulate, explode that block, and manipulate then the individual loudspeakers uh, back yeah. to doing exactly what they want. But I can then tilt, spin, uh, pan, and tilt the entire array yeah. uh, as, a, as a single block. Virtual tweaking, shall we call it? Virtual tweaking, <laughs> yes. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Um, all right, cool. Uh, the other thing, um, Tom, are you uh, are you up for sharing your screen and doing us like another super fast demo? Um, how do you feel about that? I'll, I'll, I'll try and do it super fast, whether yeah. I'll, I'll be successful. I we were blown away. Like I think everyone that saw that was blown away last week by how fast and amazing that was so i think um oh, well, that, that's very good did you tell everyone it was all fast forwarded it <laughs> yeah it was pre-recorded and fast forward <laughs> no no um, um all so dave, live. dave can i draw a piece of trust yes go for it so i've opened a blank drawing Ooh. so you can just start with control n or uh, open any any of your blank drawings because it's going to end up being 3D, this drawing, I've uh, in the top left-hand corner of AutoCAD, it says the word top. So we're looking at a plan view or a top view of this um, of this piece of blank model space. Uh, I've done a new layer in the Layer Properties Manager called Center Line, and I'm going to draw a line which is just left to right two meters long. So this is going to be the center line of my piece of truss. I'm going to use the offset command uh, to offset 305, so center line to center line of the truss. I now am going to go to left elevation. So uh, this is where it goes from a 2D object to a 3D object. So I'm going to go to left elevation. And I now have two lines, which I'm going to copy up by 305 as well. I'm going to hold the shift key down and uh, hold the middle wheel button. And now I have four lines. Uh, I'm going to use the rectangle command. Uh, that's it. So rectangle command, do the center line of the end posts, uh, top view. I move it in by, this is a totally made up piece of truss. I've moved it in by 75 millimeters. Mirror command along the center line to mirror that like that. 
And now I'm going to do a new layer called truss, a circle of a diameter of 48 mil. I'm going to copy that six times, or six in total. I'm going to use the sweep command to sweep this object onto this object, and this object onto this object. So the center lines have disappeared temporarily, yeah. but I can uh, bring them back if necessary. Oops, does that not work? Oh yeah, this is the problem, isn't it, sometimes? Okay, I can do it a different way. So I've exploded that polyline, and I do the sweep command on a line. Like so what is, the, what is the sweep command actually doing, Tom? Uh, so Dick it's is a new taking, one on me. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's taking uh, one object and sweeping it along another object. And in my circumstance, I have got one object which is a uh, straight line and another object which is a circle of a diameter of 48 millimeters. So it's extruding that 2D object along the path that you've given it, whatever that path happens to be, right? So if you were doing a, a curve, for example, rather than just a straight center line, then it would actually follow, it would extrude it along the, that path. Is that correct? Uh, yes, absolutely. So in plan view, I've done an arc, and I'm going to do a circle of 48 mil diameter. I use the sweep command, select the object I desire to sweep, and then press enter, and along the line I desire to sweep it on. <sighs> yeah, isn't it? It's so cool. <laughs> but there are, are, as, as uh, I'm sure you all agree, there are limitations in AutoCAD, and it's, it says, oh, it's a Thursday afternoon, I really don't want to do it, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> And it's really, really frustrating. Um, um, so uh, I've just used the array command to array those items in uh, uh, at, at the end. I should need to another center line here. I'm going to use the divide command, and I'm going to divide it by, I don't know, eight for argument's sake. Maybe that's a bit too many. So if I click on one of them and do select similar and delete, so I do divide command and divide it by six and now i just need to copy everything except for the actual 3d solid into these locations i'm going to go to the front elevation here and with the center line command i'm just going to join a few dots together oh, uh, nice. and this will be our cross bracing in a moment i know it wouldn't necessarily look like this in real life but for this scenario so i'm going to use the sweep command but on purpose i'm going to do diagonal as a new line select that object and make it green so so we can all see it do it's a diameter of 25 millimeters possibly sweep that along there and that's not going to work that's a shame isn't it oh um, it's so good though. <laughs> uh, why has that done that then it's not it's, seeing the I'd line probably as a close the polyline which is yeah. a bit of a shame you need to leave it okay, so I exploded it once and then do J for join. Yeah. And it's bring it back into a sweep command again. And I do that. And now I'm going to go to the left elevation and I use the array command again. So I need to array it around somewhere. In this circumstance, I'm going to array it around the center point. So array, select the object, select uh, polar, select the center point. It always does six. I don't know why. I change it to four. Default, yeah. Yeah, I explode that. I wish I could change it. I'm sure there's a way to change it, but I don't really know. Uh, and we have a piece of trust. Boom. Boom. Of as, as, as we remember last week, the reason for doing a uh, um, uh, a reason for uh, doing it in 3D is so you can tell someone a story. In this circumstance, I'm not sure you need to tell someone a story about a piece of trust, but if it's <laughs> two pieces of trust or if it's a if it's something hung off a bit of trust, you can uh, yeah quickly do that. And just a reminder of that command you just used there to get the different um, it's called, it's called view base. Yeah. And if you if you oh, don't necessarily remember, that's week. no issue. Yeah. When you go so it, between model space and layout space, the layout tab in the ribbon highlights blue. For some reason, it doesn't actually take it to you. I uh, take you to it. Sorry, it does highlight blue to give you an indication that it, it it wants to tell you something. So you click on there, and you can either use the rectangular viewport command, which is a, a totally <coughs> way in a perfect way of doing a viewport but if there's elements that are 3d hmm. uh, you can use the base command yeah uh, and uh, but it only only works everything uh, so if i go to here uh, whoops if i go to a visual style 2d and i do a circle yeah. you can clearly see the circles there i go back to the model space and nothing happens because it just doesn't understand 2d at all yeah yeah gotcha amazing <laughs> Right, I think the thing is, we need like we need a name for this segment where Tom does this incredibly speedy work and kind of does this kind of 
demo in whatever it is five minutes but we need to come up with a better name so answers on a postcard please let me know and we'll do Fantastic. some sort of t- title slide for you next week and and, and i'm <laughs> sorry i don't have ocd but i gotta do one thing here <laughs> i got a, I got a sure? union together because in model space uh without it being union it didn't show the birds is it birds mouth around here yeah um it didn't show those because um, they were just clashing, crashing into each other. Exactly, and it was clashing, and it, they didn't understand it was uh, together. So okay. if you, in that circumstance, you can do it a different way, but if you union it together, so you have multiple solid objects turn into one union of one solid object, it understands the bird mouths along here. Um, I, have, yeah. um, I have a question. Every time you use that command, do you think onion? Or is that just me? <laughs> no. Uh, um, <laughs> Oh, I, I don't see. know why. Like every time I have to type that one, because I use it quite a lot, I kind of have to go onion. I don't know why. Anyway, sorry. That's yeah, not, to, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> potentially, but I think no, at the same time, I think, me. oh, I shouldn't have done that because later on I want to take it apart. So yeah, uh, so that it's, is it's annoying. A it? bit, it's it's a perfect tool because it does exactly what you desire, but it's a teeny bit dangerous because you can't necessarily undo it. Yeah. Um, the next day. So yeah, yeah. So the other way. Yeah, the other way, the, the 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 more sensible in this circumstance, not in all circumstances, but in this circumstance, would be to keep the diagonals and the main chord separated from one another. So you'd use the subtract tool. So you'd uh, subtract the main chords away from the diagonal. So therefore, there's the two solids. It does exactly the same thing in the end. Uh, I you can see the bird's mouth uh, around here, but um, more most importantly, you can change the cross bracing at a later date uh, if you wanted to. Yes, gotcha. Very good. So you, you're just saying you could create two separate 3D objects there. You could have the cross bracing as one object and then the, the chords <clears throat> and ends as another. Is that what you're meaning? Just so that you can... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I, just, yeah. Uh, if I just undo it, so I go back to model space, yeah. you can see that I've got three layers because I've got three layers yeah. here, all uh, very lurid colors. Yeah. But what I, don't, what I don't have at the moment is the computer doesn't understand that that's going through there yeah. or... It, it doesn't it doesn't read it so what you do go visual style 2d you make a copy of this element here but in exactly the same place yes uh, uh, use the subtract command select the in this circumstance the green enter and then magenta enter and so um it does the same thing it's uh just got holes use... in it effectively oh yeah sorry i uh, i apologize i should have unioned that together visual style 2d turn that back on go back to here select that like that and then uh click green enter magenta enter and there we go and then and then at this point a really good tool um is you can explode uh the blocks into separate uh sorry the solids into separate solids again so then you have full control again but uh that's that's how i draw it very good very good thank you for that tom fantastic um dom we were just uh thinking that if you wouldn't mind sharing your screen next yeah, and take us through a little bit of what you've been up to, kind of, you kind of been taking your 3d model that you'd created a couple of weeks ago now, maybe, and kind of taking uh, that quite a bit further. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's happened over the last week. Um, oh, just a moment. Like... Screen share is not appearing for me yet. Hold on callers. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's frustrating. Let's try again. I'll stop presenting and come back again. Stand by. Uh, it just says stuck, mine's stuck saying Tom White is presenting. Tom, is your one still showing as presenting? Might not. Be. Uh, no, I can see I can see Dom's uh, desktop now. Okay, so it's something with Google on my side. Bear with me, callers. Um, just have to look at my face for a moment while I just try and fix this. Yes, that has indeed frozen. Sorry, bear with me. I'll be back in just a moment. It, it all right, started as I hope we go. get to see it. Sorry, I just had to drop out of the call there and just jumping back in again because Google froze on me. It wouldn't let me through. So here Acoustic we go. Back in the game. Dominic. I really don't want to work in that venue. <laughs> Where's this, Dom? Yes. <laughs> Where's this? Uh, it, this? This has come totally out of my mind. Actually, it came out of, a, of all things, a school project for my son. He had to draw a theatre um, oh, for wow. school this week. Uh, so we did a very basic one and I then carried on with it. Very good. Um, but this is to allow me to do a whole lot of other things we were talking before about uh, my production electrics workflow, how we tell the story of a venue, and uh, then probably moving on to BIM and visualization. 
So Amazing. I wanted a really good stock first venue. Yeah, and did you um, so did you pick somewhere in particular, or is this this is a fictional venue you've created? It's a fictional venue. It's yeah. got the kind of curved walls that the uh, venue had in Sydney for Cyboss. Right. No, nice. it's got kind of front of house from a uh, venue in Betty Arena in Berlin, uh, yeah, which yeah. I was in last year. Yeah, and it's kind of got a standard West End fly bar system behind it with a single stack fly rail. Very good. So, so it's like um, a sort of super league of. Um, of venue it's like all the ideal bits you picked from other venues well it's all the bits to make it's all the bits to make me work really hard so yeah uh, we've got some standard rigging in here cool. um we will be putting some bridles in to pick up these motors up here which yeah. aren't actually sitting on anything at the moment yeah um it's got some flying stuff in so i'll then start doing some proper theater uh flop 2d fly information and things like that so uh, it, it's got a lot of bits to make me work really hard and uh, improve my workflow Perfect. And so you're just you're using this as kind of a test case for yourself just to push you to explore some of the Vectorworks features and some of the information you can actually sort of yes, hide absolutely. away, but you can you can put it in the drawing. Cool. Yeah, it's all those bits that I've kind of we were saying earlier to Tom, it's all those bits you, you learn enough of to get through the project you were doing at the time, but never follow it any further. Um, yeah. and with Dick talking and talking with Dick over the last week or so about telling stories. Hmm. And it came to mind that in the past, we'd used to do quite a lot of flying away shows, but the producers wouldn't come with us. So I had to tell a story to the producer what it was like to be in the venue. And a lovely lady called Carol Crane, who we work with quite regularly, and she wouldn't go there until the day before rehearsal. Mm. Um, so I used to do a lot of drawing for her um, and give her various information of what it'd be like to be on stage and what it'd be like for speakers and various cameras. And so what this allows me to do is, uh, if we zoom in here, Vectorworks has correct cameras with lenses on, as you will well have seen on the site. And it allows me to look down the camera to see what what you would see. Let me also render out quite quickly. My laptop's spinning away like anything. <laughs> it's going to start steaming once. soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. I hope if I click it once, there we go. So this is a, an up, upper balcony look. So this is the view from the upper balcony. Yeah. Renders in properly. Um, we can go from a lower balcony. And uh, homage to Mr. Paul Langford, the big orange square in the middle in the middle of the stage, something he did last year. Um, yeah, my laptop's definitely enjoying this. Um, but what he then allows us to do is to export it. Oh, if I bring this in, hopefully, yeah, that'll come in. And it was talking last week about how and it's, you asked Tom a question about about what's the point in drawing 3D, or Dick asked Tom Question, what's the point in drawing 3D? And out of this one drawing, I can extract a lot of information very quickly. So we can do a standard plan, top down, with a square on stage showing the fly bars, staging pieces, seating. Um, if we view it, we zoom in, it's picked up seat numbers, uh, size of truss, uh, motors, size of chain lengths. We were just talking about the um, the sort of library that Vectorworks has. Is, is all of that information already built into each of those a lot of it. <clears throat> symbols? So, yeah, so, or have you had to yeah. sort of add them in for some of them? So for the seating, the seating is built in, or an individual seat's built in. I've chosen how it's built and how the rows do, but then it automatically numbers for them. Cool. Um, it adds all the distance calculations for the motors, what the motor is, what the load trim is. So that's yeah. like even. But the bit, the kind of the interesting bit is, what we can do from there, from the 3D. So here's a kind of classic producer question, where can we put people on stage? Where will sight lines work? So by doing a very quick section of it, showing all the trusses, I can instantly show from somebody sitting in the upper balcony, back of stalls, front of stalls, mm. where someone would be. And in this venue, we would couldn't suggest that anyone, if we were going to use the upper balcony, we couldn't cover the orchestra pit because they just wouldn't see anyone coming further forwards than that. Yeah. So in, instantly we, we can show that graphically that at that point in time we're stuck. So, so, as well, so once from, so from this 3D model, as well as being able to give uh, an impression to a producer that hadn't seen the space and what the different kind of camera angles could look like or what the different views were to the stage from the different seats, kind of best seat in the house, worst seat in the house, you know, identifying where the cheap seats are. You've also done quite a bit to work out, like, actually you can't get cover, uh, camera coverage within the orchestra pit. So Yeah, so the, these, these lenses are correct. Cameras, these, obviously. Yeah, these lenses, so I could actually go back to uh, my yeah. dear colleagues at CT or Jonathan Bond and say, yeah. look, I put this camera at the back with this lens on and this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah so when we go and, on and we how, do... how far does that go in in with in terms of the symbols like do they have lots of different cameras with lots of different lenses or yeah, um... if we go back we actually go back into vectorworks and choose a camera yeah um, dun, 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 dun. i guess it's that okay. it's those parameters i think that are really really fascinating yeah. about the, so, the vectorworks so, workflow and, and in, in, the, in the same way as i was talking about the sound program chiming with my gut instincts you know all of those 30 something years of, of of experience of doing these things surely not 30 Could, dick <laughs> do, do, does the camera you know the the have you have you talked to them have you looked at down a camera yet or is this so new uh this this these cameras and the use of cameras like this came out with 2020 so this this year's model so i haven't actually sat down with jonathan and say look this is what I think I can see. Would you agree? What would be amazing is to actually do a job on site and then go to uh, yeah, to PPU and actually look at it and go, really. yeah. And and yeah. that's the kind of information I like to know. Go to the racks engineer and go. Did we actually line up? Can we trust this? Yeah, and I think um, also there's a lot of as a lot of the I guess motion graphics world, a lot of the Unreal Engine kind of virtual studio stuff that's kind of being used on a lot of uh, I guess upcoming projects over the next season while people are under lockdown. Um, there's actually quite a lot more power that could come out of some of this, being able to plot some of this stuff better in advance. Um, and Dom, I think that, what was it? It was the Riot Games final last year, wasn't it, in, the, in Paris, yeah. where yeah. they the the whole gag needed to work, obviously, primarily on camera, but actually there were things on different planes um, in the arena, which meant that, uh, and there was content going between those planes. So in order for those to work, you kind of needed to to model that correctly otherwise the the, yeah, the content wouldn't quite line up and then in the real world the stuff needs to go into the right place as well so it's not just being able to model it but it's being able to actually deliver it in the right place in the real world as well yeah i think that's my hope in this whole process um with what we do with the laser scanning at one end um is to have we have a with a couple of other production electricians, a, a guy called Arnold Stevens and Cookie South that we're having everything on one plan so for the production houses that we have or the, <clears throat> we, we laser scan it whatever we know the venue is good we then build the show which we know is good um, we can then visualize off that um, we can then hand it out to the lighting designer we can hand it out to dick and all that array calcs and everything comes back in and we know it works dick has done the calcs in his dmb program we put the arrays exactly where dick says to us so when we say to the producers or the producer says to us well that's really going to be yeah that's exactly where it's going to be it's not ish bish here that's exactly where we're going to be dick has done the calcs brilliant and, and i think, think going, as you start to blend ahead. the different modeling processes and the different bits of software the the accuracy of the the capture process in the first place and then the accuracy of the modeling but needs that all needs to flow through in a line otherwise when you turn up on site the content guys are going to be remaking all the content to adjust it for the for the real world stuff that you know if it hasn't been worked out properly in advance yes yeah, yeah. It, it's it requires everyone to understand the accuracy level all the way through the food chain mm. um but very quickly look at the right of my screen you can see uh i've got cameras um tripods lenses i'll see if it'll pop up with a, with a lens so so there's the lens that it comes with um from long lenses to very short lenses um so what's that's the focal length 4 to 52 15 to 55 it's, uh, 8 to 156 so it's most of the lenses we would see on site with bodies and different um yeah with different bodies tripods um you name it it's all there so and then you can come back up here and i can pan the camera i can tilt the camera up and down rotate it in the uh, give it the focal length we want on the lens and uh, and again, is that sort of thing comes here. in set as part of the symbol as well? Because I don't know if, Tom, if you yes, do the same the... thing, but I use some of the cameras for the viewport and kind of have to put in all of those parameters manually um, in the property settings in CAD to then set up a, a viewport and paper space that would show that same kind of sight line from a particular seat. Do you do, you do yeah, I do exactly that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really like the idea of the fact that Vectorworks just has this this library of symbols. Yeah, this, yeah this all comes in. in already, like... Yeah. Oh, what you And then just showing this, talk, talking about showing a story cool. uh, to a producer or somebody else and being, I can take, a, a, I can put a polyline on my plan. And again, I can use uh, the size of lenses and cameras, but I can basically make a little quick time movie yeah. for the producer. And this is done very quickly, so flying around the venue, but you could choose your path to give detail. Yeah. Um, but this allows 
you to send something to a producer they can ask a specific question and they can see what it, what it'd be like uh, yeah, to be absolutely. in that space they what it feels it. like yeah um and get the yeah the idea being there and so, is the line array in the way or not i guess that's the key question for yes Dick. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I sorry promise I, I, you, I, it's not I, yeah i i hadn't actually uh, realized dick had sent me the bit so for next week i'll put dick's line array in and uh redo the video and we can have a look at it um, I'm now I'm now absolutely hung out to dry having already said I promise you it's not. <laughs> I'll yeah. send you a quiet message if it doesn't. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Brilliant. Um, well that that was really, really on good. On the slightly question. philosophical point, Dominic. I mean yeah. it, it surely this is this is one of the reasons that everybody this is the future, there's no doubt about it. This kind of stuff has never been up for us before. But it is now, and Tom's nodding his head. This this has got to be the future. There then has to be um, people like uh, people like me and and people from the the video, the the cameras, vision mixers, what have you, community, getting involved and trying to bring that gut feeling experience in, so that we don't suddenly get handed one of these plans and go. But it looked okay on the plan. <laughs> oh, Absolutely, and yeah. I, I would love to anyone of those communities and our friends, Jonathan Bond in, in sound, and you're doing video, uh, in video, and you're doing sound, and shortly and co, to actually start testing this out, to build models and actually send them around and get people to come back and go, not on God's earth because the physics says this, or actually we're quite close with that. But it, uh, I'm sure I hope Tom would agree. All this stuff has been creeping up with us in the last couple of years. All this ability has been creeping up behind me, and I haven't had time to concentrate on it properly. And now I do. I have the time to concentrate now, and I have a very good reason to concentrate on on it now to hopefully create a workflow that doesn't just work for me drawing plans and throwing them out of the door. It works for everyone in the production process, and I, we I, have a resource. I I, f I fully agree with you, Dom. I think that um, maybe the, uh, one reason for me personally that I might not have gone into the level of detail is um, the lack of. Um, correct or, or direct information from a venue. So one of the things I've, uh, I think needs to be pushed more and more is uh, asking for a venue if they have the available 3D or if they don't, um, is somebody uh, able, do we know anyone who's able to do a 3D scan of a venue? Because um, the earlier you do a 3D scan of a venue in a, in, a, in a production, the more use it gets and therefore it gets more and more cost, cost effective. And um, I, I think that's one thing is, is if if a whole team's not able to go to a different country, I, I think the the three D scanning is going to come to the forefront. In my mind, it's always it's been there for a number of years, but it needs to be in the forefront of many more people's minds. I think yeah, the it, other it, thing as well, in terms of um, augmented reality graphics, is being asked for, and like as a production manager, you know, as people are pitching things, they've been costing up quite often in the last over the last few years, um, but part of that you know is camera tracking technology but it needs to be married up with a real world experience and so the accuracy level to be able to make things actually sit in the right place um becomes really really crucial or the yeah the poor guys on site are endlessly tweaking the the models in unreal engine etc to be able to <laughs> to um to adjust with the reality of the situation so it can make a huge difference on site um just having the right information and I think I think all of us on site people would say that if we if you gave us the choice between uh, uh, of what 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 to have, it would be a good reliable plan. You know, uh, yes, it'd be lovely to go and see every single venue, but that's expensive and that's not going to happen. But a good reliable plan gets over ninety five percent of the of the oops. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and and that's how how my projects always start. I people ask how much it costs to do a project or how long it will take to do a project. And my question, my first question is always, what's the quality of the venue drawing that you're going to give me? Um, and if it's a Microsoft Word document or it's a it's a hand sketch <laughs> from 1988 or something like that, um, I, I try my best to say potentially, would there be any money to do a 3D scan? And and the the honest answer is. Oh, maybe it's too late in the process is the most uh, general answer and sometimes there isn't enough money um but uh, yes the quality the quality of the reference material helps the whole project yeah i think unwittingly um between dave and i we proved this last year of my work um, as you mentioned with riot games that we were doing scans for for cad for, for cad for lighting sound staging so we fitted it all in 
And it wasn't until I got a phone call from somebody in Spain saying, we understood you scanned the arena for the show. Can we have an OBJ file from it? I was like, what's an OBJ file? Because I had no idea. We want to use your information to create a virtual world to do a fly through. And suddenly the 3D scan had paid for itself again and straight off. And, and they took the information and off they went. It, it was a fantastic add on. And it wasn't until I was sitting back in the UK and go, wow, actually, this one process can go across the whole production um, very easy and very quickly. And people, I think, will get better extracting information out of it. And I'm sure our video colleagues could tell me all sorts of things they could do for mapping as well with the use of a 3D scan and then a, and a correct model. Um, it was very interesting working uh, earlier this year on Cisco with CT. Um, we had a circular waterfall and uh, it's about 12 meters across, built in the middle of a in the middle of an exhibition center. And uh, Neville over CT took my trust drawings of it, put them into his modeling, his projector modeling, and could then project uh, work out the projection angles and then send it back to me and I could then add in all the projectors on the truss so I can then calculate the weights we then calculate the, how we're going to run the water and how we're going to run the electrics and then suddenly from one piece of information which was 3D models um, we had the, of that area we knew exactly where all the pillars were and we put it up and we knew we were going to have about that much at the top of the truss and we had about that much at the top of the truss when we finished <laughs> <laughs> and it all worked. So um, so it's that ability to share amongst departments and I'm very keen to talk to as many people as possible how we can make this workflow easier and all get it into one place. And that's exactly and one of, one of the I things that workflow, isn't it? Sorry, Dick. Go yeah, on. and one of one of the things that didn't end up happening on on that particular bit was that I'd been talking to a UK company um, who have um, little little trackers, little RF trackers, uh, and basically the we we got it all planned out that if anybody walked up to to wherever they wanted to be, um, the video would start uh, and would project for them automatically as soon as they went there. Um, there were reasons we didn't end up going with it, but um, all of that could then be pre-programmed off-site uh, and then just tweaked to the last minute. Mm. Fantastic. Well, I think, um, yeah, I guess just in closing, kind of to say there's there's so much kind of new technology, new workflows that people have got a bit of time to kind of sit with and explore. And I think um, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of people trying to think about what they're going to be doing in the freelance community, especially over the next kind of six, nine months, um, sort of towards the end of the year and beyond. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see, like so many people are going to develop these new workflows. They're going to have these different ideas, these different approaches that will um, that will kind of build us into a stronger community going forward. So thank you very much to everybody. Uh, bye to Dom. Bye bye. Thank bye you very to much. Dom. Thank oh, you so much. There he goes. <laughs> and bye to Dick. Thank you very much again. Thank you guys. <laughs> have a good week, everybody, and we will speak to you soon. Cheers. <laughs>